Hello, and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Multicaf Embedded Rendezvous Point Concepts. Embedded RP with IPv6 Multicaf is a very nice concept. It simply embeds the rendezvous point IPv6 address as part of the multicast group address. This way, when the multicast router sees the group address, it can extract the RP and begin to use it for the shared tree immediately. The only thing that has to be hard-coded on the router is to tell the RP that he is the RP, and that's it. All the other routers in the network dynamically learn of the RP address from the group address. So here's the problem. A 128-bit RP address can't be embedded in a 128-bit group address and still leave space for the group address identity without some type of compression. Let's look at the steps for creating an embedded rendezvous point IP address for multicasting. If you're not familiar with the Internet Protocol version 6, you might want to view one of my videos on the concept. We will first take the rendezvous point and compress it into the embedded RP address that we will use in the next video. This is the IP address that we're going to use for the rendezvous point. We're going to put it on the loopback interface address of this router. It is composed of a network prefix and an interface ID. Since we're going to use an embedded rendezvous point, most of the interface ID values have to be zero. We're also going to use a multicast group ID of 9999 colon 9999. Now we're looking at the embedded rendezvous point IP address format. Most of the digits are grayed out because those sections we're not going to concentrate on yet. We're only going to focus on the section in red. And we will eventually get through all of the IP address. Since we're going to be using multicast, the first two digits will be FF. This will make it a multicast address. Next, we have to set the flag so that the routers will recognize that this IP address has an embedded rendezvous point in it. We will use the number 7 to let them notice. Next, we need to consider how far we want the multicast packets to travel. Normally, we will want it within our organization or company. So I'm going to use the value of 8. The very next value is very simple. It should be set to 0 because it's reserved for future use. It has no functionality at this time, but at some future time it may. The next value is the last digit in the interface ID number. The remaining numbers should all be zero. The next two digits are the prefix length. Since 64 bits is the normal standard, I will use that. But since we're using hexadecimal digits, 64 will translate into 4-0 hexadecimal. So we will put that inside of our embedded IP address. Now we'll put the network prefix 
inside of the embedded rendezvous point IP address. And lastly, we'll add the multicast group ID of all nines to the end of the embedded rendezvous point IP address. Now, we have completed the creation of the embedded rendezvous point IP address. This is the IP address that will be sent out by the multicast server and requested by the client computer. It contains the IP address of the rendezvous point, including the prefix link for the multicast group ID of all nines. None of the other routers need to have this rendezvous point IP address statically configured on them except the rendezvous point itself. Embedded rendezvous points are the newest and best way to dynamically configure a multicast network with the rendezvous point's IP address. In this video, we looked at the concept. In the next video, we'll look at how we can implement this feature. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.